Josh Shore, Diego Strider off the coast by 5,000, 6th place, 1956. Well, halfway through the race, I thought I was having a really bad day. I kept looking at splits, but I kept trying. I had so much support from the crowd. I kept hearing my name, so I kept trying and trying. I saved a little bit for the finish, but then I realized that it wasn't just me. We were all running about 15, 20 seconds off our goal. So I might have gotten discouraged halfway through it, but I still hung on. And I think if I had known that the course and the weather was a little off today, then I wouldn't have thought so much about a time goal. I would have just gone for a performance. Yeah. And I think opening mile, I didn't do the right tactic, I guess. I should have gone out I with them, kind of sit on them and block the win. But I decided the to go a few seconds really off, hot, assuming that they were going to run around 13.05, 13.10. So I wanted to but play it safe and run 13.20 or under. So once I realized there. that it was tough, nice I was nice. trying to bridge the gap, but I couldn't it get on it. So basically, I ran in no man's land. And the, the heat and the wind, it sounds silly, but it was like having a heater in my face. Yeah. So it was just wearing me out little by little. Now that so I really didn't have a race or much contact until uh, maybe a K to go with Heron Lagarde, and, and that's when I woke up. So why do you think the time was slow? Was it the the close? Was it weather? I think it's a combination of both. Last year we ran it early in the morning, and I, I remember that the weather seemed fine. It was windy, but it wasn't hot. And I remember I came through the first mile with the same tactic, got a one to two seconds behind the lead pack, and I came through it in 4.13 or so. And then I bridged the gap on the backside with the wind on my back, and then I was more involved in the race. But then this year, it was a not maybe not a greater uh, factor with the wind, but the heat was just too much for me to handle. Well, not necessarily to handle, it was just deteriorating my, <laughs> my strength. <laughs> Sound like you had a few troubles getting in. Uh, yeah. Travel, can you tell me about that? Well, it's kind of silly. I mean, it's nobody's fault. So I was going to travel to California last Saturday, and my parents and my sister caught the flu. So they called me. I canceled that trip. So I called right away my agent. I said, we need to switch the flight. So it was a last moment thing. So I had a flight out here to go from Phoenix out to Salt Lake City to Salt Lake to San Diego. Sure enough, that started around 7. Got to Salt Lake, boarded the next flight around 9. Supposed to land here around 10.30. We're cruising up there for like 30, 40 minutes. Pilot says we can't land. And we go back to, out of all places, Phoenix, Arizona. So I did a big loop. I was really frustrated. So I'm like, no big deal. I'll just cancel the flight, fly out tomorrow. But apparently Delta doesn't fly out of Phoenix. So I waited it out. It was around 2 or 3 in the morning. We flew back out. I took a cab around 4 in the morning. <laughs> Got to Carl's about at 5 a.m. And that was my, I guess, my Saturday or Friday night. Guys, <laughs> so congratulations. Thank you so very, very much for being here. Yeah, I actually didn't get to my hotel to bed till 5 a.m. So, I mean, it was tough, but like Coach said, just, you're young, go recover, but uh, maybe that would have, <laughs> I like to think maybe that's my excuse, but no, it was, I don't even know what to point out other than the weather here today. So you got some pretty good range. You obviously uh, ran Great Hoff Marathon earlier this year. What is the uh, focus for you this year? Well, you know, I, in the back of my head, it's, I see all of my training gear towards the marathon, like my long runs and my tempos. That's what gives me the motivation to get it done. But right now, Coach feels like our main focus is the track. So I got my eyes set on trying to make the world team. And I know it's really tough. I mean, if you make a US team, I feel that you're a top five, top 10 contender at Worlds. So if I can make that team, my whole season will be shaped around that. And if I miss that team, then I might go chase some fast track times in Europe and then try to sweet talk coach into <laughs> some longer stuff in the fall. Yeah, so like a 10,000, is that what you're trying to be making a team at? Yeah, I feel like that would be my best option. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like I've closed in 53.8 before, mm -hmm. but it's been off a slow pace. And sometimes I have it and I don't. And I feel in the 10,000, I can probably grind out a 225K and make that team. But a 225K, I'll just serve as the rabbit in the 5K. Um, so you talked about the marathon. Do you, do you have any designs on doing a full marathon and running Next year? Uh, with coach, that seems not to be into the factor into the equation right now. But for me, I mean, I'm open-minded. Making that Olympic team is my main goal, and right now he's he's not budging with it. But if if for some reason he allows me to run the trials, I'm happy to be there. I mean, it's an American Championship and it's the Olympic trials. So it might be you never know. You wish for future races, but that might be my last Olympics. You never know. <laughs> Where are you going into a marathon like the Olympic trials without any? Experience. Well, you know, it's I, if I ever ran, I would like to debut here in the U.S. Just because it take away the factor of traveling, take away the food, the time change. So it in the in the fall, it would have to be New York or Chicago if I had to do it right in now. But place. I don't think I would have enough time to get ready for that. Sure. So I would just go straight into the trials. But 
like I said, he's the one that's pulling the strings, and right now he's he's not budging with it. Thank you.